This is Bad Homburg vor der Höhe. It carries the suffix vor der Höhe because it lies near a range of hills, the Taunus. And it carries the prefix Bad because it is a spa town and as such it has the usual Kurpark with a Russian Orthodox church in it for reasons I may have to research for a future video. In this video, I want to talk about one man's crazy solution to a town planning problem. Bad Homburg had long attracted members of high society and even royalty. Kaiser Wilhelm II often spent his summers at the castle. That's why the railway station is rather grander than you'd expect and why it's so patriotic. And more to the point, why there was a special station building reserved specifically for the Kaiser and his guests. But in 1901, the newly elected mayor, Ernst Ritter von Marx, identified a problem. There wasn't enough affordable housing for middle-income families. The town was stagnating because it couldn't attract enough permanent residents. Among his many projects, he proposed a middle-class residential area to the west of the town. The difficulty was linking it to the grand shopping street that was Luisenstrasse, which was also the main route to the railway station. Between Luisenstrasse and the proposed new suburb lay the town's old quarter. This was not a convenient area to have to go through. The streets were narrow and they were steep. The old quarter was built at the bottom of the hill that Luisenstrasse was at the top of. If you wanted to avoid the steep and narrow streets, you had to take a long detour around the outside. Well, Ritter von Marx realised that the answer was to build a new kind of road, and this is it. What makes it a little different? Well, that's hinted at in its name. It's not a road, it's a bridge. A bridge that spans the entire Old Quarter. It has been called Europe's first ever flyover. Now, I'm not a civil engineer, but I have read that technically it's not a flyover. Arguments in the comment section, please. It was, though, an ambitious project for its time. Care was taken to make it look historic. A fake watch house was built, which today serves a rather more useful purpose. The so-called Witch's Tower is a reconstruction of the original. I say so-called because it was never used to imprison witches and was originally called the Hessian Tower. The two words simply sound very similar in German. For the project to get started, Ritter von Marx needed permission from the Kaiser. This proved very easy because the Kaiser realised it would allow him to drive his automobile from the castle into the countryside, so he was all for it. The town council was also very enthusiastic about the idea. Ritter von Marx presented his plans on the 5th of January 1904 and the council unanimously voted in favour of it on the same day. The project required the demolition of 23 properties, but for the most part, the town council was able to negotiate a generous settlement with the owners. In only three cases did they have to resort to a compulsory acquisition order. Construction started in the following October. Just 11 months later, the Kaiser officially opened it by driving over it. Even though it cost twice the original estimate, which isn't a new problem, it was considered a great success. Unfortunately, it was built to carry early 20th century traffic and didn't cope well with late 20th century traffic. After 70 years, it was found to be unsafe and had to be closed to trucks and buses. Plans were unveiled for a new, modern design made of concrete. It would better withstand heavy loads and give at least some residents a little more light. But this idea met with fierce public opposition, so eventually a compromise was proposed. A modern bridge, but clad with stone, to make it look similar to the original. 
It took just 18 months to renovate and reconstruct the bridge, which was reopened in time for the town's Lantern Festival in the late summer of 1980. There are places where you can see the actual bridge, but those bits that are most likely to be seen by tourists are encased to look historic. These days, of course, Luisenstrasse is pedestrianised, but the bridge still serves an important purpose. It allows road traffic, including delivery trucks and buses, direct access to the town, but keeps it out of the narrow, historic streets. As for Ernst Ritter von Marx, as a Jew, he was forced to emigrate to Britain in 1935, where he died in 1944, just one day before his golden wedding. But he had left his mark, and his widow was invited to Bad Homburg in 1955 when the bridge he built was finally renamed in his honour. If you'd like to visit Bad Homburg, it is easily reached from Frankfurt by S-Bahn trains on Line S5, running every 15 minutes. In theory, you can get there by U-Bahn, but the line stops at Gonsenheim from where it is either a long walk or a bus ride. <laughs>